Hello. <laughs> uh, you guys can be seated. Um, there was a bet going that I wouldn't cry. And I think whoever's going against it's going to lose because I'm about to. And it's because I want to honor Trey and Carrie. I can imagine and I can see this place as a garden. There's growth here. It's not dead. It's not a desert. It's not isolated. There's growth. And there's almost almost like individual gardens where you, you're helping us see the things inside of us, but you're also helping us to be keepers of the garden. And so I want to thank you for teaching and for leading, for all the sweat and all the hours that you pour into people to help them keep this garden. It's flourishing. So thank you. Let's give it up for our pastors. All right. Whoever lost paid up. 20 bucks. There we go. So we are currently in the series, Building Blocks, talking about building character. And uh, I think we, we've had some amazing, we actually had a panel a few weeks ago, and then Pastor Trey kicked it off talking about Joseph's family, because we're going over Joseph's life. And then last week we had Micah speak, which was incredible. Dude, I cannot un, I, okay, here, here's what I'm trying to say. The, the game of tag, you're it, I can't not see it now as God saying, it's your turn, you're it. That was incredible. And I want to thank you, dude, for that, that message. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved it. So memorable. I'm like, I won't ever forget it. So thank you. Uh, but today, I want to talk about how God builds character through dreams. Literal dreams. The dreams that have been tucked away inside of your heart for a long time. The desires those things I want to talk about and how he builds character. And I want to start off with Genesis 37, 5 through 11. If you guys will turn there in your phones or your physical Bible, however you want to do it. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. This is starting out pretty good, y'all. <laughs> Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way that he talked about them. And soon Joseph had another dream, and again, he went back to his brothers, and he told them about it. He said, listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. Now this time, he told it to his fathers, and he told his fathers, his father and his brothers, and his father scolded him, and he said, what kind of dream is that? What kind of dream is that? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow before you to the ground? And while his brothers were jealous of him, of Joseph, his brother, his father wondered what the dreams meant. How many know you can be jealous or you can wonder? The title of my sermon today is A Gradual Becoming. Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you that you always have something so personal for us. Every single week and every single day, you're speaking to us. Today is no different. God, I thank you that there is clarity in Jesus' name. Where there is fog, it's dissipating, and we can see clear. We can see where you're leading us. I thank you, Lord, that this word is going to be with us. Your word is going to be with us, not just today, but tomorrow and the next and the next. In Jesus' name, amen. Has anyone ever said or prayed, God, build my character? 
No, no. No, because when you do that, you know what's going to come after you say, God, would you please build my character? Like, you just don't ask those sorts of things. And, and uh, there's one particular moment recently that I can think of when I think of God building my character. And it's the new addition to our family. And no, I'm not talking about kids, okay? I am talking about our new dog, Bailey. You want to see her on the screen? There she is right there. She is so cute. She's a little mix of heaven and hell at the same time. She, oh man, she's, God has used her in many ways to build my character. And uh, she's a cavapoo, if you don't know what that is. It looks like a stuffed animal. She's just chilling right there on the couch with her legs off. She's got a really chill personality. Okay, cavapoos are a mix of a poodle and a King Charles Cavalier. All right, so King Charles Cavalier, if you don't know, that's the, the lady and lady and the tramp. Okay, so those two dogs together is Bailey. Well, that was Bailey. And so they're very, very friendly because we were looking for a dog that was going to be a family dog that wasn't going to bark at other dogs and other people. Like we had a Chihuahua. Her name was Sweet Pea, but she was feisty, feisty. So we wanted somebody or some dog that was a little bit, you know, more friendly. So we went with the Cavapoo and they're very smart. The poodle on them is very smart. Very, very smart. And they love to play. So we're like, this is the wise decision to go with this Cavapoo. Except I didn't realize how much of a spaz this dog can be. Truly a spaz. And what I mean by spaz is that she will jump at you for an hour to try to get your attention over and over and over and over and over. And I know we can train her. We're working on it. We're working on it. But I'm talking about her personality. She is just crazy. You don't read about the, the bad things. You're only looking for the good things, right? This is the good things that I want. I want somebody that, or, or, I keep saying somebody, a dog that is just pet friendly. A dog that's pet friendly. A dog <laughs> that is family friendly, that loves people. Y'all, this dog, if dogs, and I think dogs are, extrovert and introvert this dog is an extrovert she has to be around people constantly she is strengthened by being around people and so you know i just i'm not used to that like give me some space please and then we have the puppy phase that i just totally forgot about she chew she chewed <laughs> she chewed through my macbook charger which if you guys know, Apple loves to just have their own little accessories and they charge so much for one accessory. You can't, I mean, you can buy the third party ones, but they don't work. So you have to go with Apple. Amazing little strategy right there. But they, they just charge you so much money, 80 bucks for me to replace my MacBook charger that my dog chewed through. And I guess it's, it's not her fault, I guess, <laughs> for, for me to leave out the charger. And just not expect, or expect her just to leave it alone. But I, I, I'm still working through that right now. I'm building my character. So God is, indeed, he is definitely building my character. Even with this dog. Because he wants me to become more like Jesus. Has anyone heard the phrase, we're moving from glory to glory? Yeah, I've heard it for a long time, and I never really understood what it meant. And every time that I hear it, even to this day, I only, and I don't know why I think about this, but I only think about frogs jumping on lily pads from glory to glory to glory. That's what I get in my head. It, it's just weird. I don't know why I think that. But we're actually going to talk about what it means, and we're not going to talk about lily pads here. So I want to take you to 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 real quick, just to highlight. And I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. We are going to get to dreams, okay? Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. 
every degree or level of glory, we are being transformed. We are being changed into what? Into becoming more like Jesus. When we move from glory to glory, we're becoming more like Jesus. And I really, really like how the message put this. Um, It says, whenever, though, they turn to the face God as Moses did, God removes the veil and there they are, face to face. They suddenly recognize that God is a living personal presence, not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old constricting legislation is recognized as absolute. We're free of it. All of us, nothing between us and God. Our face is shining with the brightness of his face. And here's what I want to point out. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become more like him. I really, really like how they put gradually becoming. How many know that this life is a gradual becoming of more like Jesus? It's a slow Slow, slow, slow process. Sometimes there's instant change, instant healing, all that. But for the majority of the part, the majority of it, it's just a slow, gradual becoming more like Jesus. The story of Joseph, it was a gradual becoming. The dude, he went through a lot. And his journey, it started at 17 years old. And then he, he wasn't in charge of all of Egypt until 30. So 13, is that 13? 13 years of moving from glory to glory to glory. I want to tell you right now that your, your entire life is a gradual becoming of who God created you to be. Okay? And the truth is, this is my first point right here. God cares more about who you become than what you accomplish. God cares more about who you become than what you accomplish. John Ruskin, he said that the highest reward for one's toil is not what he gets for it, but what he becomes by it. And I'm like, don't get me wrong. God is, is interested in every facet of your life. He loves you. He is a father. Just like I love it when my kids achieve something and succeed. I think it's amazing, but he is more interested in what's happening inside of you when you make that achievement than the actual achievement itself. He cares more about who you become than what you accomplish. Because every time that there's there's growth inside of you, that's the moving from glory to glory to glory to glory. Which kind of leads me to, how does God make us more like him and this is where building our character comes in he makes us more like him by building our character by growing the character inside of us and the bible says that the fruit of the spirit is the evidence of his presence within us and if you notice the fruit of the spirit is not achievements and accolades it's characteristics it's love joy peace kindness gentleness right that's what god is interested in he's growing that inside of us So God desires that we become more like Jesus, and we become more like Jesus by building our character. So the question is, how does God build our character? It's through adventures. Adventures with God. God builds character through adventures with him. And adventures are the moments in life where you start one way and you end up a different way, where you think one way, and then by the end of it, you think a different way. Every adventure with God is a chiseling to help you become more of who created you to be, and and you become more you when you become more like him. For the longest time, I just thought, if I I become more like Jesus, and we all become more like Jesus, are we all going to be the same? Like, is that how it works? And the truth is, is that as you become more like Jesus, the Bible says that, that you know, in Matthew 5, 14, it is, I think, here's another way to put it. You're here to be bringing out, you're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. Every one of us has a, a God color, a shade of God that you carry 
And as you become more like him, your color begins to reveal itself even more and more and becomes more unique as you become like Jesus. So God, he builds character through adventures. Anyone like adventures? No? We got a few people who like adventures? All right. And I want us to think about it real quick when it comes to adventures. Like all the timeless stories that you can think of, they they start one way and, and then they end up a different way. Think of uh, A Christmas Carol, right? That story is still being told. Ebenezer Scrooge, right? Is Ebenezer Scrooge, right? He He is so grumpy. So just ungrateful at the beginning of the movie or at the beginning of the story. And by the end of it, he is generous. He is grateful. And then we have, um, let's see. Oh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Classic, right? He is a who himself. Who hates whos? Does that remind you of somebody? Paul? Yeah? No? He hated whos. And by the end of the movie, he just, his heart grew three sizes and he loved. And then I think about Chronicles of Narnia where they just thought of themselves as children. But then at the end of the movie, as they walk through the door into the new world, they realize actually they are princesses and queens and kings destined to rule the land, right? God builds character through adventures with him. And in all these adventures, there is a gradual becoming. And I want to tell you, it's, it's not an adventure if you are the same person that you were when you started. God is interested in change. He's interested in growth. He's interested in who you are becoming. And I want to let you know also that the, the current adventure that you are on right now, God is growing something inside of you that is going to be used for the next adventure that he has for you hang in there hang in there he's growing something inside of you for the next adventure joseph's adventure with god was it was unique and we don't really have his his story from zero to 17 it just kind of picks up and leaves us right here when he turns 17 and uh but we get a glimpse of his family his family like pastor trey talked about a couple weeks ago is kind of messy right uh, but at 17 is when the adventure starts for Joseph, and specifically when he has the two dreams, right? That's when things start really picking up. That's in the, and the thing in the movie when you're like, okay, this is getting good right here, okay? And so I want to let you know, this is my, my third point right here. Adventures with God start with a door. They start with a door. And what do I mean by door? I, I mean that these, these doors can be literal dreams that you have. They can be the desires that have been tucked away in your hearts. They can be uh, just these feelings, these recurring thoughts and ideas that you just can't shake. God is telling you, this is, this is a door that I want you to walk through because there's something I want to show you on the other side of it. Doors, they're invitations. They take you from the space that you're currently in into a new space, right? And with Joseph, the the door was the two dreams. So I have a question for you, and I want you to think about it. What is the door that's right in front of you? What is God calling you to? What are the things that he's put on your heart, and you're looking at the door, but you've not walked through it yet? It's time to walk through the door. Because God wants to move you from the space that you're currently in into a new space. And actually, there's, there's something about doors that it reveals what's behind it, the look of the door, right? Like, when's the last time that you went to the bathroom and walked through a door that had a window on it to the bathroom, right? Or, or a, a bedroom door with a front door handle. Like, the look of the door reveals what's behind the door. What does your dream look like? Because it's going to reveal what's behind it. There are some doors that will lead us into the same house, right? 
if I'm going from the living room into my master bedroom, if I'm going from my kitchen into the living room, that doorway right there, it's in the same space, but there's other doors that lead you out of the house into a completely new territory where God is wanting to do something inside of you. And those moments you want to pay attention to. Those are the moments with Joseph right here where he realized, okay, this is a brand new space. Because if we look at the, at the dream that he had and in his response, or the brother's response, it showed that the reality that he was in right now was not the same as the dream that he had. That was the door saying, you know what, this is a door, this is a front door moment right here where I'm going to walk through and it's going to be a completely new experience, a completely new territory. I've not been here before. This is new. This is a new space, but it's time to walk through the door. With, with Joseph, he had that dream. The reality didn't match the dream. So there was a gap and there's growth in the gap. There's tons of growth in the gap. So don't be afraid when there's a gap. The bigger the gap, the more opportunity that God has to grow something inside of you. God is not calling you to a place where you're not going to change. If you're not changing, it's time to find a different door. The types of doors that invite you into adventures with God are those where you're moving into an entirely new space. So what is the door in front of you? What does it look like? Is it going outside to a whole new world where the birds are chirping and the whole neighborhood is there? You can pick another door into another house, or is it the same house but just a different door? There are times whenever you walk through the door, right? You're, you've walked through the door, and you've made that decision, and then... When you walk through the door, you realize, okay, the adventure has started, but this is not what I imagined. Has anyone been there? They started on an adventure. They started going after the dream, and then you realize, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I imagined. I kind of think of <clears throat> maybe like a new job that you started. You had a hopes and dreams and you you're imagining all kinds of things and the friends that you would meet and uh and then all the activities and the job actual duties and all that stuff would be this way and then you get into the job and it's like this is not what i signed up for i, I didn't sign up for this or maybe you know if you just gotten married and you imagine this is what life is going to be like both of you have this imagining of what life is going to be like and you get into it and it's not what you imagined. Are you going to stay when it's not what you imagined? Kids. Anybody have kids who have imagined what it would be like? I imagined it would be like this. It would just be, you know, they would be quiet and chill <laughs> and there would be no issues and I wouldn't have to get up at night and, uh, and it would just be incredible. And like, you have this imagining and it's not what you imagine. So you think, ah, oh, I made the wrong decision. I walked through the wrong door. But that's not the truth. That is not the truth. That's a lie. You didn't walk through the wrong door. It's just not what you imagined. Joseph, his dad gave him a cool coat at the beginning of that story. You all remember that? The robe. So he, his dad was like, hey, can you go check on your brothers? So like, yeah, I can do that. So I imagine he had his coat on, and he's walking up to his brothers. Hey, guys, how's it going? I just wanted to check up on you. Now, he's the loved one, right? And remember, his brothers hated him. So they're already, as he's far away in the distance, they can see him, and they're thinking, we got to find a way to get rid of this dude. We have to find a way to get rid of this dude. And so as he is walking up, after he had the dreams, they throw him into a pit. It's called a, a cistern, which is 
a, a big hole in the ground that catches rainwater. And some of these actually have stairs to get back out, right? And I imagine that they threw him into one that didn't have stairs. Otherwise, he would be able to get out, just walk right back up and say, hey, guys, how's it going? No, it was one that didn't have stairs. It didn't have water. It was probably the worst condition to be thrown into a cistern like that. And I can imagine after that, you know, the brothers were like, hey, let's pull him out. Let's pull him out. But not because a change of heart. It was a change of plans. They said, instead of throwing him in the pit, we're going to sell him to be a slave. And I can imagine Joseph was like, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I imagined. I had dreams of these people powing before me, and now they're throwing me into a pit. I'm in a hole looking up at them, but they're supposed to be bowing before me. What, what's going on? This is not what I imagined. I want to pause for a moment because that statement, that can be tricky. This is not what I imagined. This is not what I imagined. This is not what I imagined. Our, our imagining is focused on the end result, right? We're focused on what's going to happen at the end. We don't ever imagine the process. We don't imagine having to wake up and feed the baby at 3 a.m. when you're exhausted. You don't imagine having to go back to work the next day when you're so tired. You don't imagine that. You just imagine the end result of a happy baby and a happy life. It's all gravy, but that's not what we imagine. We have to be careful when we say it's not what I imagined. I want to encourage you that if you just started an adventure, if you just walked through the door, if you're in the middle of the adventure and it's not what you imagined, don't quit. Don't give up. God is also imagining. So you have you imagining. It's not what you imagine, but God also is imagining something. And the thing that he has imagined is far beyond what we can think, but it's going to grow something inside of you because his imagining will be your awakening to a greater purpose that you could have never thought of. So stay with his imagining. God, what are you imagining for me in this season, in this adventure? Not what am I imagining? What are you imagining? Joseph, he, he started in a pit and then 13 years later was leading a whole nation through a famine. It started with, this is not what I imagined. And ended with, this is more than I could have imagined. But in order to get to more than I could have imagined, we need to go through, this is not what I have imagined. It's not. I started the, the message here talking about my dog. And I'm going to end it talking about this dog. I was working in my room. I, I work from home. And my office is in my bedroom. And I have a little setup where I, I have my desk facing the window so I can see out whenever I need to look out in the backyard. So my back is facing the bed. And one day... I, uh, I'm working, and I don't know how, but the whole family ended up on my bed. I have four kids, and then, and then my wife, and it was the whole family on my bed behind me, and guess who else was there? The dog, Bailey. She has a name. I'm just going to keep calling her the dog. Bailey was on the bed. Now, Bailey, 
She has this thing where if she wants to get your attention, she'll start out not with a full-on bark. It's more like, like it's barely there. But I, I, I don't know why. My ears are just drawn to that now. And it's just like, uh, she's there. She wants my attention. Right? And so I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I can't do that right now. I've got, I'm working right now. I, I got to keep working. Y'all just, and it got louder and louder because the kids were in there. And Bailey started barking because she's trying to get over the kids' volume. And so I'm like, okay, I finally turn around. And I see Bailey laying on the bed, and then around her is my family. And in that moment, God was using Bailey to remind me, come and just sit with your family for a little bit. You can pause for a second. This is not the first time that she has taught me how to be present. This dog, it started out with her chewing up my MacBook charger. But it's ended with her teaching me and God teaching me through her how to be present through a dog, y'all. A dog. It's not what I imagined. But it's becoming more than I could have imagined. I'm still working through the bitterness with this dog. But I believe even in those small moments, God is doing something inside of me. He's growing something inside of me. There's still a gradual becoming of more, becoming more like Jesus through a cavapoo. There is a door that when you walk through it, this is a special kind of door, when you walk through this door, you'll never regret it. And this door is when you say yes to Jesus. I remember walking through that door and I had hesitations and doubts. But I said, you know what? I'm ready for an adventure, God. I'm ready to see more. I know there's more than this life that I'm living right now. I know there's more. And today, I'm walking through that door. And I'm never looking back. This will be the last door that I walk through in this life. I'm going to keep walking through other doors, but it's going to be with God. It's going to be with God. Today, I want to invite you to that same door. If you guys will close your eyes and and bow your heads and just take a moment. We talked about how God wants us to become like him. He desires for us to become like Jesus. And he does that through building our character. And he builds our character with adventures. And there is one adventure that is going to just radically change your life. It's not going to be easy. Jesus didn't say life is going to be easy after you accept me as your Lord and Savior. He didn't say that. But it'll be worth it. One thousand percent. It will be worth it. the adventure you're about to go on is going to change your life. If you've been feeling that, that desire, that, you know what? I think, I think there's more to life than what I'm experiencing right now. I think God has a different plan And maybe you've disregarded it for a while, but now that voice, that feeling, that thought, that desire is becoming louder 
and louder and louder. And now it's to the point where I just, I can't shake it. I've got to go through the door because I know this adventure is going to be wild and it's going to be amazing. If you are ready to walk through the door and say yes to Jesus, to say yes to the adventure, will you slip up your hand for me? Yes. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Thank you for your courage. You will not regret this. I promise you, you will not regret going through the door. As you turn that doorknob, you're going to experience something that you've never experienced before. Jesus is going to be with you now from until now until the end of time. He is going to be with you every single step of the way on every adventure because there's going to be more adventures. There's going to be more doors. Church, if you will repeat after me, Jesus, I know that I've messed up. I know that I am a sinner. But today, I'm walking through that door. I'm choosing you, Jesus. I accept you as my Savior. I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose from the grave, that you love me, that you are for me, and that this adventure is going to be the most amazing adventure. I'm ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give it up for the people that gave their life to Jesus. Heaven is going wild, so we should go wild too. I am so excited. I, I'm very excited about the people that just gave their life to Jesus. And those of you online, if you just gave your life to Jesus, we have a next step for you. That is a QR code on the screen, and we'll drop a link in the chat for you guys. This is resources for you to start growing on your journey with Jesus and with this adventure. All right, so you guys, thank you so much for coming out. I'm so glad that you gave your life to Jesus. Go and be the church.